Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, this is Tom here with our second special youth episode. I really love uh, our guest today, but let me tell you about our youth episodes. Uh, I plan on featuring outstanding youth who are starting and running businesses and are making a difference in the world. And, and right now, there are a lot of youth who are making a difference in the world, but I'm not sure the difference is all that good for them or anybody else. So, so uh, I really like the ones who are making a good difference. And, and I've run into a young woman who in only four weeks in my school was helping other businesses make a difference. So uh, you'll meet her in a moment. Now, I encourage anyone listening to this to send me notice of outstanding youth who you think would be a good candidates for a special episode on Screw the Commute. And they, uh, and, and when I say youth, I'm talking about maybe up to early 20s or so. Now, they should be running or starting a business or a nonprofit, and I'll run it by my secret board of uh, directors, and uh, we'll will select at least one young person a month to feature. Now, also, my school is approved by the Department of Defense for their scholarship program for military spouses. So this is just an announcement. So if you, if you know any military people, please send them my way. The school is really perfect in that not only can the person learn at home, they can legitimately work from home even if they're deployed to some faraway land. So we really want to help out our military. Now, today's sponsor is that distance learning school, the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. That's imtcva.org. It's a distance learning school. And, and please don't even think about retraining yourself or sending your kids to college until you check out our webinar on higher education. I do not want you wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars and putting yourself and your kids under crushing debt. So the webinar is at screwthecommute.com slash webinars. And you can also just click on the webinars button. All right, now one more thing. I've got a great freebie for you just for listening to the show. It's my $27 ebook called How to Automate Your Business. And just one of the tips in this book have saved me over 7 million keystrokes. And that was as of a couple years ago, so it's probably seven and a half million by now. So uh, check that out at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. We'll have links to everything in our show notes for this special youth episode for April 2019. All right, now let's get to the main event. Ashley Monk is an up-and-coming entrepreneur in the Indianapolis area that's been in the marketing game for roughly two years, but in uh, four months, she's laid a foundation to begin establishing her own digital marketing agency. And with a background in ministry, she's an example of how grit, discipline, and ambition trump formal education as she paves a new way for herself and others. And she's also enrolled in our school, and we're really glad to have her. So, hey, Ashley, how you doing? Mom, I'm great. Thank you for asking. Super excited to be here with you today. Oh, me too. Me too. I was so thrilled when uh, uh, your dad told me you were interested in the school. And uh, you've been in there how long now? I'm going on, it's really been only two or three months now. It's <laughs> so pretty short. Yeah, yeah. But tell tell everybody what happened after about four weeks of being in the school. What happened to you? Oh, my goodness. It's been fantastic. So long story short, um, I think even being young, um, my generation really does have – they've kind of grown up with all the bells and whistles. And we've I am really the social media and the digital generation. But with that being said, we've had this at our fingertips that I think as I've kind of grown up um, – it's kind of been hard to grasp the foundation behind all the tools that have been at my disposal. And so I was so interested when my dad was telling me about the school, because even though I've learned a lot along the way, um, I never had the, 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 just the steady foundation to really, um, grasp the tools that I was using. So I started with the school. It gave me, um, so many tools just right off the bat that, 
even though I knew and was familiar with certain platforms, uh, I didn't have the resources to use them. And the school gave me all those things. And so after that, um, I took the plunge and uh, kind of organically <laughs> grew into a little bit of a small business. Um, and so I'm now making about $1,100 a month outside of my full-time job, um, just taking on different marketing clients. And I'm excited to start taking steps to do that full-time. Yeah, and that's you, know, you were only in there about four weeks at the time. And the, yeah. see, see, the thing is, is a lot of uh, the small business owners are a little older and they're just pulling their hair out all of this, stuff, trying to keep up and they know they need all this stuff, but they have no clue how to do it. And it's just agonizing. And so, so somebody like you comes along, uh, you know, youth is revered when it comes to this kind of stuff because, you know, young people came out of the womb, like swiping tablets and, uh, yeah. and cell phones, you know, so, so, uh, people just started asking you to help and giving you money for it. Right. Basically. Yeah. I offered, um, I work with a lot of small business owners and I just started to offer to help people doing it for free. Cause I had a knack for it. And then hadn't had any background or training. Obviously my degree is in Bible. <laughs> so if there's an, a question you have about exegesis or anything, when it comes to scripture, you can ask me, but I had no formal marketing training or business training whatsoever. Um, and so anyway, small business owners would just approach me. I would graciously help them in any way that I could. And I just got good at it. And then people needed more help than what I was just showing them here and there. And it's kind of led to a small client base. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that'll grow very rapidly for you when word gets around, that's for sure. But, but, you know, a lot of young people are, are appear to be cleaning up on Instagram and places like that, but a lot of them aren't really turning it into money, right? Yeah, correct. Oh my goodness. The whole influencer generation thing. I think there are so many, if you're not familiar with the term, an influencer is basically someone that amasses a large social media following online and has, there are different levels of influencers, but some can get to the thousands and the millions. And what's so interesting and just mind boggling to me is they, here they have just by taking um, great photos and having great like content online, they have this huge audience and they're not doing anything with it. Maybe some of them are, that's an exception. Um, but there are so many that are spending all this time and they've got this audience and they're not using it or leveraging it to their advantage. It's crazy. Yeah. And even, uh, I mean, with you helping any small business with even a, a small percentage of the audience, if you're focused on turning it into business, that can be a, a game changer for a small business. Yes. No, I agree, Tom. And I found myself kind of in that same fatal mistake, mistake before I started your course, because I growing up with all of these platforms, naturally, um, so many of my friends and my community, um, I just grew up. And with that, it kind of, again, created an organic following <laughs> that I had online. Um, but again, I was just posting stuff about life, this and that, and um, was posting all these great photos, but I had no, and was posting content that served my audience that engaged them. But never once was I really trying to curb a profit from that. And so once I got in your course, I'm like, oh my gosh, why, why am I spending so much time doing this and not like, it's just, it was a duh, like a no brainer kind of moment. Yeah. But there's just so many people out there that are in that same boat. They're, they're yeah. really uh, good at this, but they're not good at the marketing and turning it into money. And that's what, uh, what we're helping you do in, in the school. So tell us about your plans for your digital marketing agency. Do you have a name picked out or what's, what's your plans for it? I do. So it's just really funny how it's kind of all flown together, but, um, I've kind of basically started from scratch. Um, so I did, I started another company last year called Genfound, which I'm still passionate about. Um, but passion does not always lead to profit is what mm -hmm. I've kind of come to learn <laughs> over the last yep. year. Um, and I've loved doing that. And, um, but anyway, even when I built my website there too, I used the drag and drop builder, didn't know anything about like the back end or things for SEO, like what I've learned in the school. Um, and so <laughs> with starting a digital agency, I've implemented a lot of those tools, um, that you teach Tom about having a managed WordPress being self-hosted, um, using a different domain and host. I've implemented all that and just kind of been working from the ground up. So I, it's crazy that business is coming in. I don't even have a website yet, um, but it's <laughs> almost done. Um, so my company's name, it's it media. And so we're basically just a digital agency focused on providing, um, full service marketing packages. Um, but at small business prices that business owners can afford, 
Um, because why should you spend time if you haven't grown up with these tools? And if you're like an experienced mental health professional um, or you're in the finance world, why should you have to spend more time and learn all these tools when they're changing every day? Um, and how much easier would it be just to hire someone to do that for you? So I'm kind of like your <laughs> on-site marketing professional on your team. Um, but covering those bases for my clients is really what so I do. So what's what's the uh, the actual domain name? Yeah, it's buyitmedia.com. All right, so what what was the actual domain name of that place? Absolutely. Your site? Yes, it is buyitmedia.com. So B, How do you spell that? Yeah, it's B Y, so by like written by it um media m e d i a.com. Okay, so I, uh, I hope that you also bought, if you haven't, I hope you run over and do it, B-U-Y, because if somebody else ha buys that domain, part of your efforts will be sending people who misspell it over to them. So uh, I want well, you to go uh, right. buy that immediately, <laughs> okay. if possible, B-U-Y it immediately. You got yeah. it. You got it. Yeah, and see, this is the kind of things we learn in this in the school that you know you're jumping in so fast. You uh, these some of these little details will really kill you. And like yeah. I said, right there could be a part of your marketing is going sending people somewhere else instead of to you, and they don't know the, the difference when they get there. So so make sure you pay attention to that. And for everybody listening, anytime you use like the number two in a in a domain name, make sure you get the numeral and the multiple spellings of the word to buy all those domains if you're going to do that or the word for you know you got f-o-u-r you got f-o-r and you got the number four so you just don't want to be sending people uh, you know spending all your efforts driving traffic and then people go to the wrong place when they hear it now if they're just clicking on it, it doesn't make any difference but like this is a podcast and if they try to go directly instead of going to the show notes uh, a lot of people will will they, they won't even know they're misspelling it because by it is also sounds normal. B U Y I T is uh, that's a typical thing. I'm going to go buy it, you know. So, so I want you to uh, get all of those so so we get the maximum number of uh, uh, profits to you, my buddy Ashley. That's fantastic. No, <laughs> thank you for that. I will be on GoDaddy eating all those up. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So take us back a little bit. How did you decide to go to uh, Bible school? Yeah, so growing up, um, I was always very involved in my local church and just loved being able to help people um, and serve them well. And I really wanted to be a pastor for a long time. And so that was really my dream. And so when I went to college, I've kind of always been one of those people and Tom, I'm sure um, just the little bit I know and I've gotten to read about you, you're a lot of the same way. I don't like to always go with what everybody else is doing. Yeah, that's <laughs> I kind of sure. like to do my own thing. And if there's a more efficient or a more cost effective way to do something, I will find it and I will go that route. Um, and so I did one semester on campus, um, a formal education um, at a Bible college. And I just, I decided it wasn't for me. I just started to ask mm -hmm. myself these questions like, why am I paying all this money um, to get the same education now that online school is so popular when I could go online? Why am I not going to a school where I can work through college and get experience? Um, but all that to say, I was so passionate about ministry and I just wanted to do ministry. <laughs> I didn't want to have to sit in a school and sit in a classroom all day. I was like, I just want to go out um, and get to do this. So I ended up, I was in Florida at the time. I moved back to Indiana and um, ended up going and finishing school online while also working um, at a church full time. And so I enjoy, I love the church that I went to, but I just really started to feel um, this tug that hmm, maybe even though um, I love getting to do this, like maybe this isn't what I would necessarily want to do full time. And that's another mm -hmm. challenge that, and what I loved uh, that you said at the beginning of the episode about looking into your program before you invest so much money in your education. Um, I'm so grateful for um, the education my parents provided me. And no doubt having a bachelor's degree um, is has opened doors for me that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, but I think in 10 years, that's going to completely just be out the door. Um, but in even my job now, um, I didn't need a degree to do and I get compensated for more than I did when I work in ministry. Granted, <laughs> ministry doesn't always be right. that well. Anyway, um, but all of that to say, um, I started to think about those things. And so 
thankfully and gratefully, while I was in school online full time, I was also working full time. And I ended up getting a job at a church that I connected with back in Florida. Again, great church. Um, and I was working full time, going to school. And after just being in the organizational process, I was two years in. Um, I was like, I don't know, even though I love being here and serving here, I love helping people, but I don't know if this is the outlet or the vehicle that's going to be best suited for my skill set to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of had the realization there are so many different ways that I could do that. Um, and this is a great one, but it doesn't have to be the end all be all. And to getting married, um, financial struggles. Those were all things where I'm like, shoot, I might need to kind of reconsider. And at the <laughs> right. end of the day, my most important ministry is to my family. And I was about to get married. Um, and so the most important thing to me was serving my husband to be well um, and just figuring out what that looked like. <laughs> and so I transitioned into my career in property management now, uh, working with a family that I've known forever. Amazing, amazing people. And that was really how I shifted from and just had that epiphany moment, shifted from ministry to property management. But the way I fell into marketing through that whole debacle was um, I had to market my office space, right? So I get paid mm -hmm. on commission and these leads aren't always going to generate themselves. So I had to kind of get boots on ground and start <laughs> employing some guerrilla tactics to figure out how I was going to be able to um, keep my office space full. And in doing that, fell in love with marketing, came across the school um, through my dad, who's I know in your circle as well. Mm -hmm. um, he got me on board and I was like, oh yes, I, I need to do this. And um, had the epiphany that I can still love and serve people well through marketing. Um, and it's just been a really fun way and cool way to help people and to see small businesses flourish, um, in an area that I'm finding that I'm, I excel in. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's even talking about getting your brother into it. Yeah. I think my brother, <laughs> my brother's on that cusp of, um, he's about to go to school full time. And my dad is like, he really should look into this. And I, I would agree. I mean, there are still a few jobs out there. I mean, if you're going into law or if you're going into the medical field, we're sure obviously you need to have, I hope if I'm going to my doctor <laughs> that they know how to operate. Right. I mean, but honestly, business and digital marketing, everything is changed. I mean, the world as we know it is changing every single day. Um, the marketing landscape is changing every single day. Um, business as we know it, um, everything is changing so quickly. And these colleges and these accredited programs, they just can't, or not accredited programs, but um, just these colleges and universities cannot keep up. And so um, in my field in ministry and obviously biblical study, that field doesn't change. And so had I said in ministry, um, that would have served me well. And I did, I learned so many soft skills in ministry that have carried over now um, into what I'm doing. But overall, I mean, if you're going to school for business or marketing, my question would just be why? Like, why are you going to pay 50000 a 100000 All my friends are crippling in debt right now. Mm -hmm, um, right. They can't find jobs. So they're moving back home with their families, and um, which is, I mean, they're doing what they can. And it's just, it's astounding to me just how much the world has changed and how formal education can't keep up. Well, some of the, the big authors in the educational field, you know, because you know, I don't want to be accused of always hawking my school, all right, but some of the big authors in the educational arena that were in that system for years and years and years are saying that uh, maybe 20% of the people get a job in their field that they, that they went to school for, if you're lucky. Yeah. And, and many, most of them are competing for jobs at Starbucks, you know, so... Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and w another big thing that it, when people watch that webinar that I, I just uh, mentioned in our uh, opening, uh, they don't count uh, as the cost of going to college, the amount of money that you lost from not being in the workforce, yes. which is estimated just average about $40,000 a year. So if you go to a four-year college, you're already $160,000 behind just from that. Not yeah. counting the uh, where the the tuition that you don't even know how much it's going to be, and uh, and the extra fees they throw on, and the worthless courses you have to take, and uh, all that stuff. Tom, it's so true. And I look back, and my parents, we kind of laugh, but we still cringe because my parents. Well, your still... dad cringes, you know, behind yeah. the scenes a little bit because yeah. I know how much he paid for your education. Yeah. Well, we just can't even believe too my one semester that I lived on campus, had room and board and tuition covered. 
I think costs more than the next three and a half years to finish, which exactly. just makes you, <laughs> oh, it makes you so sick to your stomach when you think about that. And thankfully, um, switching feel again and to what I was making entry level ministry positions, depending on where you live. I mean, some pay less than this. Uh, I would say anywhere from 30 to $40,000 a year salary. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, that when you're paying student loans and for most Christian colleges, that's about $30,000 a semester to go to. I right. mean, by the time you calculate all of your expenses, that's, oh my gosh, that's not, that's not sustainable. And I think any adult knows that, but a lot of um, young adults don't do that. And then parents just want to support their kids. And we live in a generation where the American dream is still alive and well, and parents wanting to support them, send them their, um, but gosh, I think as when you're 18 and you're graduating high school, though, you just um, I think it's crazy, too, that the government even allows these type of loans to be taken out at such a young age because you don't know the value of money. Um, high schools aren't teaching any even high schools. They're not teaching personal finance skills, business foundations um, as much as they should be or digital courses. Maybe there's a handful across the country that are. Um, but I don't, I just think so many of these students, um, and I'm fortunate enough that I did decide to work. And I think that's alleviated a lot of the pressure, um, that my parents had in trying to support me, but a lot of my friends didn't, um, and not bashing that, that is completely their choice. They're entitled to it, but gosh, it's these, some of these schools are, unfortunately, I think inadvertently they're setting up, um, young adults for failure. Well, I'm not even going to say inadvertently because I think you might know that I have you know, kind of a consumer advocate role and an anti-scam show we're developing in Hollywood. And some of the things I would consider downright fraudulent that they're doing, and one of them, and this is, again, not me reporting this. this, Well, I'm just telling you about it, but I didn't uh, figure this out, is uh, there's a site called gradeinflation.com, and they followed these schools over many years, and they're, they're inflating grade point averages now to make it look like they're doing a better job at teaching. Wow. Even though they followed 2,000 kids. I don't know if you heard about this, Ashley, but they oh. followed 2,000 kids through a complete four-year college uh, on multiple universities. They weren't all at the same place. And 45% of them reported that after four years, they did not w- learn one usable skill that they could use in the workforce. Wow. Yeah. But their grades make them look like geniuses because the schools were inflating the grade point averages over time. It's all documented in that webinar that I I told you about. And they were reporting, listen to this, Ashley, they were reporting that they were spending an average of eight hours a week total, that's in, in totality, preparing for and going to class and study. Oh my gosh. The rest of it was partying and eating. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if I'd want to mortgage my house to pay for it. No. When I could have a kid like you out there making eleven hundred dollars extra a month on the side in the, in a couple of weeks, you know, so and still be proud of the work you're doing too. So so uh, it's uh, it's crazy out there, and I'm, uh, I feel bad you went through that. But I mean, like you said, you learned some soft skills, and you know, makes you such a a wonderful girl. But uh, you know, it's, it's it's a shame to be a wonderful girl and broke. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, and we're fortunate enough now. Had I not switched fields, um, and I, I love ministry, it just it was just not even we couldn't figure it out. But I just can't even believe. I think my husband and I are at a household income of roughly we're right around the six figure mark. And had we mm-hmm. stayed there, like we would be, I almost wonder if we'd be below the. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Based right, on where right. you're living, it's like, gosh, how do you even afford? But yeah, like you're saying, so one of my the only friends that I think college has served them well. It was, it was not what they learned or any of the skills they learned at college. Um, it was just the relationships that they built. And, but I asked some of them, I'm like, okay, like, did your school help you make those? Like, what did that look like? How did those help you excel? Um, and where you're headed? And they're like, no, I was just really proactive and having relationships with my professors and looking and creating networking opportunities that have led to jobs. And so it's not even the schools that are helping place these, my peers and jobs. It's the proactive work that they've Mm -hmm. done. And the ones that haven't done that have struggled. So I would say any kind of program like your school um, or any kind of like my husband's studying to be an electrician right now, like hard skill programs, 
that will actually lead to revenue uh, are definitely the way to go. So many college degrees, I've heard it said many times, are about the same as high school diplomas now. And they're a lot more expensive mm-hmm. than a high yeah. school diploma. Um, and I, I just can't even tell you how many people I know can't find a job or they're constantly looking for a job because they're making it's like well under forty thousand dollars a year they'll be working for you pretty soon but hey so. you <laughs> never know that's right <laughs> hey and you know there was I, 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 I was laughing here a little bit because i was just going to bring up an example of a i think it was in the wall street journal i saw an article where a young woman was taking a lot of flack from her friends but she went into an electrician just like your husband apprenticeship program and she's making like 30 to 40 dollars an hour as an apprentice has yeah. her own place didn't have to burden herself or her parents with all this debt and she's got a skill that's going to be in demand forever you know rather than some soft thing that they'll nobody wants you know so yeah all of our friends went to probably nicer schools than we did. My friend, um, my husband didn't graduate. Um, he, well, I take that back. He went to a community college and he graduated with his, um, two year diploma. Um, but then switched gears to this and just as we're what a few years out now and to be over six figures when most of my friends, um, are maybe maybe, oh more than that, probably. Yeah. Oh, more than that. And their entry level jobs aren't making that. Um, but yeah, I think about some of these technical skills too, like my husband's learning and gosh, um, they're, these trades are dying and they shouldn't be dying because I don't know about you, but I don't know how to rewire my house or when I'm out of power, <laughs> I'm out of luck. <laughs> um, so I mean, the way my husband sees it too, that's a very scalable business that while yes, there's some grunt work and that's the thing too. I wouldn't, my generation, I just think there's, gosh, the ones that succeed are the ones that still have ambition and grit and that, um, that's just lacking, and I think people are. It's really easy to blame the the millennials, but at the right. same time, too, um, for all the adults and um, your audience that's listening, too, a lot of that does come from the parenting. <laughs> and well, how- yeah, they, yeah, they and in an effort to make it easier on their own kids, they made kids that can't handle pressure and don't have drive, and were given everything. So I'm against that giving kids everything. I think every kid on earth should have to work at a restaurant for a while. Yeah. Just to, to get the value of service and uh, and uh, the the hard work it takes to uh, to earn a, a good living. So, how long do you think it's going to be before you transition totally into your new business? Oh man! Well, I am taking baby steps, little. So I'm by not little. getting any younger over here. Now. <laughs> Remember, you're young, but I'm not. So I don't want. I want to be able to watch you oh, graduate. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I will be. I plan to be done with the school. Um, I am going through the perspective of every. I want to implement everything as I do. And that's what I love about it. It's so hands-on. Um, so I should be done. I'm planning to finish around August. So I'll be done. I think that's roughly six months so that I can really, really take in everything and make sure that I'm applying it well. Um, You're looking at the electives and things? Too? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. They're fantastic. Um, so that's my goal there. And then for my digital agency, my um, my goal and where I'm kind of the direction I'm headed would be to be able to do that full time in the next six months. So good, that is good. where I'm shooting, um, starting to figure out what that looks like, how many clients I need to get there. Um, I'm looking at different co-working spaces and networking opportunities and things like that. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. And awesome. there's definitely, um, to anyone listening to that's maybe, maybe thought about doing something like this. Um, even though I think the marketplace appears oversaturated, um, there are so many just small, and you know this, Tom, there's so many small, just niche opportunities um, for people to jump in or like Facebook ads. There are agencies mm-hmm. that just do Facebook ads or yeah. there are people that just do graphic design or only do social media management. And there's so many opportunities. Um, I don't think anybody has lost out. Um, there very much is kind of a place for everyone. And too, um, a lot of the major cities and ma- major hubs uh, like New York, San Francisco, Dallas, I'm sure they're a bit more competitive, but the suburbs, let me tell you, no one knows how to do a lot of these things um, if right. they're working and they've been in business for a while. So there are so many opportunities. Yeah. And they're desperate to dump it off on somebody because the small business owners just trying to do their business and they know they need all this stuff, but they're just clueless and they don't, uh, you know, they don't have the time to just take and learn it. So they're yeah. happy to dump it off to you. Exactly. You know, so uh, now one thing I forgot to ask you about, especially when we were talking about you went to Bible college, 
but you were also a beauty queen. <laughs> uh, you don't always mix those two in the same sentence. What's, yep. what's, what about the pageant stuff? What was that all about? Oh, my goodness. I loved it. Um, it was super fun. Um, so I was really involved in the Miss America organization, and that helped me so much with scholarships to pay for. Don't you need $100,000 per gown just to walk out there? <laughs> There are definitely ways to do it. Um, it can get pricey if you don't do it right. Um, but if you borrow things and you make, and there are so many, it's so funny to talk about because I think when you see movies like Miss Congeniality, I guess that's getting old mm -hmm. now, or movies that yeah. show pageants, um, there are so many different stereotypes about the girls that compete. Um, but really what I found, and I granted a lot of those stereotypes um, as well, I kind of took on and they were hesitant, but some of my mentors just really encouraged me like, no, like, you should really get involved. You should look into this. And so I said, okay, I'll go out one time and just not have any expectations um, or misconceptions and throw everything I think out the window. And I loved it. Um, really what is that a pageant? Misconception? Or no, it's a, yeah, <laughs> I love it. I don't know if you want to brag about that one. I mean, <laughs> conception. <laughs> You'd but be a Mrs. Conception. There though. you go. <laughs> hey, there are Mrs. Pageants, but I think my, my season has sailed. But yeah, there are so many of the stereotypes going into um, when I competed for the Miss America organization. They were all washed away because that was really where I found um, a great community. Of, I'm still involved um, with a local program to this day, um, pouring in and trying to mentor these amazing young women. Um, because a lot of them are, um, they're competing for scholarships, they're wearing gowns maybe they wore to prom or that they can borrow for somebody else. Um, and of course, when you go to state, there are more scholarships in sponsorships that cover um, some of those costs. Um, but it was an incredible networking opportunity for me, especially the interview skills, Tom. They're serving me right now as I talk to you. Um, mm -hmm. I think people think it's all just little sparkles and tiaras, but um, <laughs> within Miss America. Anyway. Are you, you aren't wearing a tiara. <laughs> right now. I don't know. I <laughs> no, can't tell. That would no, be pretty okay. funny. I do still have my crown, though. I did keep that and held on to that. Did you win something? I, I won a local title, um, and I got to compete. Um, but basically, Miss Strawberry Queen or something? Miss Strawberry Queen. There we go. We'll go with that. <laughs> Miss Miss Spirit. Miss Spirit of Indiana. Is okay, title. well, that's good. I know it. But, yeah, it um, got to win some scholarship money. But most importantly, um, just the interview skills, too, that really we ha you have to do um, for this organization. Now, other pageants are different, but this is very much – they've actually rebranded um, – Miss America has anyway, and they've taken the word pageant out and it is now a scholarship competition. So they've gotten rid of swimsuit. Everything about um, it is more really based on getting scholarships and less of that glitz and glam. But um, if you've got, if you know any young women to those who are listening um, that are aspiring to have resources to pay for their education, but also want some hard skills, like I can't tell you, Tom, um, the contacts that I made that are involved and that donate this organization as well as the interview skills you go through to compete every time you compete you have a 10 minute press um, conference style interview where you're asked very challenging political questions questions about your community um, issues that are going on and that has served me very well in job interviews well um, I, I would assume that you answered better than the most famous interview ever if you know what I'm talking about oh really. my word <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. I hope Ooh. everybody has a map of Indiana or something. You know, I don't yeah. know what she said. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word. There are that has to be hundreds of millions of stereotypes views on that. that just make me oh, it's somebody that used to be involved. They're just oh, they're so embarrassing. But oh man, they're out there. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. Well, it's been so good. Hey, will you come back after you get your agency going full blast and give us an update? Oh, yeah. I would love that. I'd be thrilled to. That keeps my oh. feet in the fire, that's for sure. All right. So so you keep after it in the school. I want to see you graduate. And you said, what, August? You're, you're slated to graduate? That's right. August is my sharp cutoff. So if I'm not close by then, you better believe I'll be pulling all-nighters and long <laughs> weekends to make sure I get it done. All right. So... So, oh, it's been so great. So we're going to have your uh, your website in the show notes, and you're going to go try to buy up every you know every similar synonym so that you um, you don't send marketing to everybody else. And and uh, but this internet stuff is a constant learning curve. I'm, I learn stuff every day because new stuff comes out like crazy, and so it's a it's a constant evolution of, of things like this. So I'm not saying you missed anything. 
I'm just saying that's just another thing you got to pay attention to if you're if you're doing this. So right. All right. So tell your husband I said hi. And any parting thoughts for people out there that are thinking about going to school or not going to school or, or the kind of skills they need to get? Yeah, I would encourage any parent who's listening or anybody who um, is about to go to college that's listening or knows anyone about to go to college, just to really look at your options. Um, there is no shame in taking some time off or taking maybe a semester or a year off. Um, and really, really exploring. Um, I, I'm stubborn and hard-headed enough that I think I knew exactly what I was going to do forever. Um, and really, um, I was not the exception to the rule. Um, and I think it's really hard as you graduate high school just to understand outside um, of your bubble, outside of your perspective that you've kind of grown up in, um, everything that exists out there. And there are so many untapped potential opportunities um, not only within digital marketing, but other fields that are growing. Um, and so my encouragement to anyone listening or exploring, even if you're not uh, in your 20s, even if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you have not missed the boat. Um, <laughs> there are plenty of, and I listened to a podcast too that was great about um, just people that were in their 60s and 70s who figured it out, who have lived life um, that need to be starting businesses because they've got the experience and wisdom that they can pour in and partner with someone maybe younger um, to help get them off the ground. But to anyone going to college, um, my encouragement would be to intern, to work. Um, I think most people go to school without ever, ever even having work, but work, work a few different jobs um, and really explore opportunities that are incredible, just like Tom has through the school where um, you can learn some of these hard skills that will get you the jobs you need. Because I don't know that formal education is the solution for everybody. Really great. You're ahead of your time. Out of the mouths of babes come some of the, the, uh, the most important things. And, and me saying it is one thing, but you're right in the thick of it. And you telling people of your age group about this, I think, should uh, carry a lot of weight with them because you've you're right there with what they're going through where, you know, I've, it's been so long since I went through any of this. I didn't remember my name. When <laughs> <laughs> so, so thanks so much, Ashley, for coming on and we're going to keep, uh, keep an eye on you. Oh, thank you, Tom. Honored to be here as well. Thanks so much. All right, everybody. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Make sure if you have any uh, youth that you know of that, are doing great things or getting started doing great things. I want to know about it because we want to highlight them and, uh, and help them out for sure on a special episode of screw the commute special youth edition. So don't forget to get your uh, freebie at screw the commute.com slash automate uh, free screw the commute.com slash automate free. And you'll get a $27 and we sell them for $27 all the time. Uh, ebook, how to automate your business. And then also, I've got a special little gift there I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll really like. So go over there to screwthecommute.com slash automate free, and we will catch you all on the next episode. See you later.